be in the beauty of holiness. Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. And we thank you that you've declared the end from the beginning of ancient times of things that are not yet done. But Lord, your word says that your counsel shall stand and that you shall do all your pleasure. Lord, we give you the name of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'm excited about what, what God gave me for this morning because sometimes, the Lord dropped in my spirit, sometimes we tend to forget how powerful God is. And that's kind of where this message is for this morning. It's to remind you how awesome he is. Title of the message, Awesome God. Turn to your neighbor. Yeah, Sean, I got quickly, I'm sorry. Turn to your neighbor and say, Awesome God. Awesome God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, we're going to start in the book of Job. This is interesting because, you know, we've had the snow and the cold, low rain, right, these last you know few days. I'm going to show you why. Oh, ain't, ain't nobody. Ain't, ain't nobody with me. Turn me to Job 37. This is so good. This explains all this, all this stuff. But there's a couple verses I want to hang my hat on. Okay, Job 37 and 2. You ready? I'm reading out the New Living Translation. Okay, I'm reading out the New, the New Living. So here we go. Listen carefully to the thunder of God's voice. As it rolls from his mouth. It rolls across the heavens and his lightning flashes in every direction. So this is letting us know that the thunder and lightning isn't just thunder and lightning. Oh, I know, but come on now, stop it, stop it. Just, just get started. But that God is behind all this stuff. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. For first, then comes the roaring of the thunder. The tremendous voice of his majesty. He does not restrain it when he speaks. God's voice is glorious in the thunder. So they're saying, and this is the inspired word of God in Job. It's saying here that God's voice is in the thunder. My mother used to always tell me when it was storming. Like I told you, she made me get in the bed and turn off the TV, listen to my cartoons and stuff. And she would, because she said, boy, be quiet, God talking. When the, did y'all have mothers like that? Huh? Mom used to tell me, be quiet, because God was talking. Seemed like Job was saying the same thing. I'm sorry, all right, let's, let's go. Sixth verse. Now listen, this is why I, what, what God showed me to explain some, some things to you. He directs the snow to, to fall on the earth. This is the New Living Translation. So this says God tells the it says God directs the snow to fall. Huh? And tells the rain to pour down. So this means that God is a snow talker and a rain talker. And did nobody get that? It says he directs the snow to fall on the earth. This is New Living Translation. And tells the rain to pour down. So he's talking to them. It says here he directs the snow and talks to the rain. Y'all ain't praying with me. And tells the rain to rain. Somebody say awesome God. Y'all awesome ain't seen nothing yet. Hold on. <laughs> Seventh verse. This explains it. This is going to make y'all laugh. Seventh verse, New Living Translation. So they talk about the snow and the rain, right? Next verse. Then everyone stops working so they can watch his power. Well, ain't nobody hollering like Wait a minute. So, what they're saying is this kind of weather. A lot of folk can't go to, well, let's contemporize it to today. A lot of folk can't go to work because of all of the snow and the rain and God's movement. 
and it says so that and it says that because of God's power being manifested in the weather, New Living Translation says, then everyone stops working so they can watch his power. Ah, Jason, Jason, Jason. Elder Harrell, calm down, calm down. Hallelujah. And this was written how many thousands of years ago? This is so appropriate today because that's what happened. But now the scriptures tell us why this stuff happens. People stop working so they can really understand God's power. Okay, are y'all with me? And isn't that what happens when it gets when, when we get ten inches of snow? Everybody praying. Folk can't go to work. Is, is, is that not correct? Amen. And now it's in the Bible. Oh, I feel oh, cold. I shake cold. Oh, uh, y'all ain't, ain't seen nothing yet. All this is showing God. Turn to the neighbor and say, "Awesome God." Oh, God. Are y'all getting this? New Living Translation just makes me upset. Then, when you get the snow and the rain and all this, the elements, it says, then everybody stops working. Good, 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 hallelujah. So they can watch his power. You see, part of the reason why God gave me this message is even for the saints to understand that when the weather conditions come in this arena, it's so that we can watch his power. Huh? A lot of folk get mad, but biblically we see the purpose is so we can watch. It's so we can watch his power. Wait a minute. So, so what are the animals doing during doing all this time? I'm glad you asked that question. In the snow and the what? What? Eighth verse. The wild animals take cover. And stay inside their dens. Somebody have an awesome God. Mm. The stormy wind comes from his chamber. And the driving winds bring the cold. God's breath sends the ice. Freezing wide expanses of water. So here in the scripture, New Living says that it's God's breath. That causes the frost and the ice. Are y'all with me? Somebody holler, awesome God. I feel my preacher. Mm. He loves the clouds with moisture and they flash with his lightning. The clouds turn about at his direction. They do whatever he commands throughout the earth. So this shows that God is the commander-in-chief of the weather. But, because it said that all these elements do whatever he tells them to do. Now wait till I get to the part that tells you the purpose of it. And I'm going to tell you right now, no hollering, no hollering. Hallelujah. 13 verse, y'all ready? He makes these things happen either to punish people or to show his unfailing love. Ah, I'm sorry. I got a quickening on that one. Hallelujah. Can I read that again? I'm going to do it anyway. Hallelujah. He makes these things happen. What things, Elder Corey? Snow, rain, frost, hus, all the, the elements like we're dealing with right now. God makes these things happen either to punish people so part of the reason for this is to punish the ungodly. Are y'all getting it? Yeah. Huh? Or to show his unfailing love. Yeah. Wait, so this is telling us that also we can see God's unfailing love in the weather. Oh God, I'm about to huh? Because we that are saved know our Bibles. We know what's going on in Job 37 and that God, we're seeing his power through the elements and he's showing us how much he loves us yes. through his power. For, excuse me. Amen. Somebody say awesome God. awesome God. 
Mm-hmm. And it goes on to say that, that, that God controls the storm. Isn't it not interesting to understand that God, so this is telling us that God runs the weather. Hmm? You can share Job um, 30, uh, 37, 6, and 7 with your friends. You can read it in the KJV, but that tells you that God's in, in control. Do you remember when the Bible said, peace be still? Yeah. Huh? And the Bible says that the winds and the rain cease. Yeah. Come on now. Peace be still in the Greek means be muzzled. Yeah. Yeah. And Baptist over there taught, taught, taught me this in, in my Sunday school class a while ago. You see, somebody said be muzzled. So Jesus told the storm to be muzzled. Yeah. And that's what it means in the Greek. And the man of God right over there pointed out to me, he said, Elder, he said, when uh, in, the, in the dark taming arena, the only person that can put the muzzle on the dog is the owner. Yeah. <laughs> can nobody else muzzle the dog but the Anybody else try to put the muzzle on the dog, dog bite. Yeah. The Bible said be muzzled when it said peace be still. That's what it means in, in the Greek. And then the man of God, sitting right there, taught me that, and the only person that can take the muzzle off the dog is the owner. So it's very important to understand what be muzzled was saying. God was saying, I'm the only one that can muzzle the storm. Amen. Why? Because I'm the owner. Because right. wow. I'm the owner of the storm, so I can muzzle it. Yeah. And it, the other thing that the man of God taught me was that, and when the owner comes over to him, not only does the Dog allowed the owner to take the muzzle off, but he bends down in front of him to allow him easy access. To allow him easy access to take the muzzle off or to put the muzzle on. Well, shine that both Somebody say awesome God. Somebody say it again. Somebody say awesome God. Turn with me to Job 26 and 7. I'm going to hurry. This also is a um, this also in, in, in the New Living Translation. Job 26 and 7 is in the New Living. Got it? God stretches the northern sky over empty space. And hangs the earth on nothing. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all didn't respond like you should have responded to that one. The KJV says he stretched out the north over the empty place. So that meant huh, there was nothing there. So he stretched out the north over nothing. And then it said that he hung the earth. Wait a minute. Read 26 7 with me in the KJV. And doesn't it say that he hung the earth on nothing? So, so there was nothing there, and God hung the earth on nothing. I said, the verse said, he hung the earth, but there was nothing there to hang it on. So that's telling us that we serve, ah, excuse me, I got a quick ending. Somebody had an awesome God. I feel my preacher. Isaiah 40, 12. We're going to stay with the New Living Translation. Look, 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 look like that's working pretty good this morning. What's the matter? Isaiah 40 and 12. 
New Living, Kura Shaba. New Living, you ready? Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Wait a minute, there's a few. Indian Ocean? What? He held all the oceans in the palm of his hand. So when you get depressed sometimes and you look at your situation, I'm here to encourage you first to let you know that God's so powerful that he holds the earth on nothing. And guess what? It's still hanging. Come on! I said it's still hanging and he hung it on nothing because there was nothing there in the beginning. And he hung it on nothing. I think this kind of God can pay your bills. I think a God this powerful can heal your body. Shout out Jason, Jason though. I guess, I guess this is worth a couple of hollers. I guess if you're going through a bad time, I guess a God this powerful can turn your whole situation around. Somebody had an awesome God. I feel my preaching. I, shut. Uh, shut. Prophet, tune it up. We getting ready to get in trouble in a minute. Who has measured the heavens with his fingers? KJV says he meted out the heavens with a span. That means this is the span. He took the, the, the top part of his index finger and meted out the heavens, measured out the heavens with the span of his finger. Oh, 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 oh. I guess God must be a big handed God. If, if he measured out the heavens with the span of his finger. Who else knows them? I'm going to go on. Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? Uh, <laughs> huh? Wait a minute. The KJV says he weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. So that means that God, listen to this. He took the mountains and weighed them. The Appalachian, all the mountains all over the world, God got a big scale. Oh, come on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How big a scale, elders, how big of a scale would it take to put all the mountains of the earth on it and weigh it? Can I preach? God is so powerful, he knows the weight of all those mountains. Earl of Cobo, how do I know? Why? I know he knows the way of the mountains because the Bible says he weighed them right here. He weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. Somebody should be getting encouraged right now. I'm getting encouraged myself. Who is able to advise the Spirit of the Lord? 13th verse. Who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? Wait, wait, wait. Has the Lord ever needed any, anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? Answer no. Did someone teach him what is right or show him the path of justice? No. No. They answered it too. They, they said no, just like we did. But for all the nations of the world are but a drop in a bucket. They are nothing more than dust on the scales. He picks up the whole earth as though it were a grain of sand. Somebody holler, awesome God. Kububo Shamba. Mm -mm. Job 15, 51, 15, my, 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 my last scripture. Does this show 
that God is an awesome God? Yes. Huh? Yes. Jeremiah 15, 1, 15. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 51, 15. And this is the New Living Translation also. You ready? The Lord made the earth by his power. He preserves it by his wisdom with his own understanding. So God preserves the earth with his wisdom. Oh, I feel my preaching. So that must, so that must mean he must be pretty smart. If he preserves the earth by his wisdom. I feel my preaching. He stripped with his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens. <laughs> Wait a minute. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. We showed that in Job. Huh? He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. So not only does he control the wind, Jeremiah says there's a storehouse somewhere for the wind. We don't know where it is, but the Bible says there's a storehouse. All scripture is given under inspiration of God and is probable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So that means that what this says is the truth. Yeah. How many of because I didn't know this either until I was God gave this to me. This so this tells us that he has wind, the winds are locked up in a storehouse. That's what the New Living Translation version says there. I think that's the 16th verse. He says, the light of the rain releases the wind from his storehouses. So God has a storehouse for the wind. The wind can't come out. See, you can't have a hurricane or nothing or a tornado unless God looses the winds from the store, from the storehouses. And I taught you in Job 37 that part of the reason why we have storms and, and tsunamis and, 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 and volcanoes and, and all these type of things, hurricanes and stuff of that nature, is to one, punish those that need to be punished. I just taught you that. And also to show his unfailing love toward us. Ah, Babusha. Hallelujah. So isn't it interesting that we see all these things about God hanging the earth on nothing? Jeremiah also said he maketh the lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the winds out of his treasure. I believe that's what it says in the KJV there. And the New Living Translation says that he releases the winds from their storehouses. Good God Almighty. But see, most of us didn't even know that there was a storehouse for the wind. Oh, what? But the New Living Translation tells us there's a storehouse for the wind. I'm getting ready to close, but I just wanted to let you know the kind of awesome God that we serve. He weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. He stretched out the door over the empty place and he hated the earth on nothing. For this cause I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he may grant unto you according to the riches of his glory that we might be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that we being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that we might be filled with all the full of God. How many people know that we serve an awesome God? I said we serve an awesome God. He moves by his power. 
He establishes the world by his wisdom. He stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Come on, somebody. Somebody say God is awesome. Somebody had an awesome God. I don't know about you, but if the Bible talks about all this power with him, I guess he, he should be able to solve any problem that you may have. If God has put the winds in the storehouse, I guess he's a pretty bad God. I guess if he's hung the earth on nothing, I guess he's a powerful God. And if I were you, I'd get encouraged. If I were you, if you're facing some kind of problem, just remember that he weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Remember, he stretched out the north over the empty place and hung at the earth on nothing. You need to know he maketh the lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the winds out of his treasure. Come on, somebody. Awesome God. He can heal your body. He can take care of your finances. He can make your boss act right. I'm talking about an awesome God. He can, he can take that pain out of your leg because he's an awesome God. If you need some finances, he can fix you right up. You want to know why? Because he's an awesome God. I said, because he's an awesome God. Isn't it nice to know that God is the devil's boss? Somebody holler. God is the devil's boss. See, some folks don't understand. The devil don't just do what he wants to do. He has to go to God first. He has to get permission. Oh, Joe tells us that because God is in full control and he worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Isn't it nice to know that we serve that kind of God that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, according to his patience and suffering with joyfulness. Awesome God, awesome God, don't give up. Hold on a little while longer. Awesome God in full control. Work of all things. I said he work of all things after the counsel of his own will. God, besides him, there is none other. Somebody give God a oh shit. Give God a praise. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. awesome God. Does that encourage somebody? If you're in a bad situation, I guess if God weighed the mountains and scales and a hill in the balance, I guess he can fix your problem. Somebody give God a real shot. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Let me call that. Rock, boom, boom, shot. Here I call on Ribobosha. Come on, Moshan, they say, come. Oh, God, we bless you on this board. Oh, Bobosha. We bless your name. There's none like you. <laughs> the Bible says, in the heaven or in the earth. <laughs> I, I hope that Job, Jeremiah, and Isaiah helped me to show you this morning that we serve what? An awesome. In the Old Testament, one guy said, they call him a terrible God. Woo! Does that encourage somebody? Somebody feel like going on now? It'd be nice to know that if you're in a state of depression, this is the God who's in full control. He can turn it all around. Know about you, but that might be a big blessing waiting for you as you make your way out the out the north. Want to know why? Do you want to know why? Awesome God, He's a. I better quit. I better. Pastor, I better. I better stop.
You got to watch the prophet over there. He keep tricking. Yeah, you got to watch him. See, see he's smiling. See, he know what he's doing. He started playing. My God is awesome. God behind my message that God gave me. That God is awesome. He also probably figured out a couple of might start to sing. Y'all, that pray. Father God, we, we magnify you. We glorify you. We give you the glory that's through your name. We worship you in the beauty of holiness. Lord, your word says, praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all the stars of light. Kings of the earth and all people. Princes and all judges of the earth. Young men and maidens, young men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is excellent. I said his name alone is excellent. Lord God, we, we bless you, we magnify you. I pray that all those under the sound of my voice on this morning were encouraged to see how awesome God is. So that means, saints of God, no matter how bad your situation might look, God is an awesome God. <laughs> you may be seated. Bless all our phenomenal Did that encourage somebody?